Hi everybody, we would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who made this event possible and especially AJS for the invitation. We are two people who published a concept in 2020 for something we called Privacy Support Space and we have partially implemented this concept with the opening of our store in August 2020 in Leipzig in Germany. Today we are talking about the risks and problems. When shopping on the internet. Online shopping is convenient, but often problematic from a privacy and data protection perspective. Most online stores require a lot of data from you. You are often asked to create an account to which your data is permanently linked. But even without an account, you usually receive an invoice by default. Invoices and billing data must be stored for years. Payment. Providers and delivery services also notice who you are and where you shop, of course. We consider the concept of a proxy store as a way to minimize these risks and problems. The proxy store is also part of our concept which you can read at dis2p.com. First of all, we apologize for this somewhat unusual form of presentation and hope that you will find it interesting and understandable. Our point of view and the description of some scenarios is, do our situation, primarily one with the general conditions from Germany or the EU and therefore possibly different from yours. If you have noticed any mistakes or have any suggestions, please contact us. We will publish the presentation later on our GitHub, where you can also take a look at everything again or make suggestions. Ideas grow with conversations, new perspectives, and experiences. We are interested in discuss these ideas with other people in order to be able to further develop our knowledge, ideas, and views. We try to design the lecture in a way that people without deeper knowledge in the respective topics can understand it and hope that it is still interesting and informative for those with deeper knowledge. Due to this compromise and the time available to us, some topics are only roughly described. Even though we are a middleman with the proxy store, at many points in this talk we are each speaking from the point of view of a person who wants to buy something online. Let us first briefly consider the current state. We live largely in a system that Shoshana Zyubov calls surveillance capitalism. What is surveillance capitalism? For this purpose, we quote a sentence from Wikipedia, Surveillance capitalism is an economic system centered around the capture and commodification of personal data for the core purpose of profit making, for those who would like to learn more about it, the book Surveillance Capitalism is recommended here. Both within such a system, but in general we have divided the process of an online purchase into five parts, first search, what do I want and from where do I want it. Second sale, what do I have to provide to get what I want. Third payment, how do I pay. Fourth delivery or collection, how do I get what I bought? Fifth. Administration, what else happens? In addition, we would like to note that one company can process all these steps, as well as several. Unless I know directly what I want to buy and where, I am faced with the general question, what do I buy and where? There are various studies with differing values, but for the most part a product search begins online at search engines like Google. Large portals and marketplaces such as Amazon, social media sites like Facebook and Instagram, price comparison sites, at the page of the manufacturer often we are already exposed to many manipulations at this point that are supposed to influence our purchasing decisions. Optimized product search, the first search hits, advertisements, supposedly reduced offers or low quantities, general trends, and much more. Customer profiles are created which are used to refine a person's profile more and more across pages and devices, so that these manipulations can be more targeted. Even when we compare products online, we often rely on statements and ratings that we can mostly not verify whether they are independent or deliberately made to influence purchasing decisions. So, we are manipulated and tracked. A online product search without influence can be difficult and sales become a competition in which those who invest the most in Marketing and slash or manipulation often prevail. After our search, at best we end up where we find what we want. At this point, we want to take a look at the landscape of online merchants. Essentially, we need to make a distinction here between marketplace slash platform and dedicated site for sales. When sellers use these marketplaces and platforms you can leverage an existing user base, but you also have to pay fees to the operators. Furthermore, 
they are bound to the terms and conditions of the operators, which limits their own influence. When third-party merchants sell through these platforms, the personal data relevant to the order also ends up at all parties involved. Sellers can operate their own sites through which they sell items. For this, most store systems such as Shopify, WooCommerce, or Magento. With these systems, merchants are given the possibilities, functions, and limits they get by using the systems. Individual solutions for web hops are an exception overall, they are adapted to the wishes of the merchants. Dropshipping, a simple way for many problems. With dropshipping, personal data is also submitted to at least two parties, sometimes even to shady companies that then pass on all the data and use it extensively. For spam aka marketing measures. But regardless of what is used, all systems carry the potential for a security incident to the detriment of customer data. We will discuss this in more detail later. When I have found what I want to buy and also have a merchant that I trust that I will get what I want. I do start the purchase. There is not always the option to order as guest, so a customer account must be opened often. For the processing of the purchase usually still several data to be transmitted, first and last name, address data like country, city, postal code, street, and house number. Contact data such as email, phone number, additional information e.g. title, gender, age, information during processing like IP address, user agent, operating system, in exceptions, e.g. for items over 18 years of age, proof of age must be provided. In addition, when opening a customer account, a password, and the creation of a history, which includes all the above data, searched. Products, completed purchases, and payment informations. A large amount of data is processed, stored, and sometimes aggregated. Most online purchases require payments before the goods are delivered. We want to take a closer look at a few of these payment options, especially with regard to what information is collected during payments and how long this is stored. We look at payments with cash, credit card, PayPal, SEPA, Swift, Bitcoin and Monero for online purchases. Payments with cash are possible everywhere offline, but online only very rarely. When paying in advance with cash for online purchases, this cash must go to the recipient. Similar to us, this is usually done by sending it as a letter or parcel. The postmark alone, even without a return address, marks where this shipment was posted. In addition, banknotes have a unique serial number that can be recorded at ATMs during deposits and withdrawals. CI Tech Sensors AG already presented a module in 2013, which can be installed in new and older ATMs and currently writes as the fifth step of the functionality of banknote readers on their homepage, Capture of Serial Number, S, for later tracing of counterfeits or statistics. CI Tech Sensors AG develops products for Diebold Nixderf and Gisek and Devrient, among others. Kaibango, Serial Number Management Solution, which also already introduced a solution for this in 2013 with a view to new regularization in China, currently writes on its homepage that data is used for detailed banknote investigations, such as tracking banknote movements or classifying suspect banknotes. But private individuals also track banknotes on sites such as Eurotracer.net and Eurobilltracker.com. Cash is also a transmitter of biometric identifiers such as fingerprints or DNA. Depending on the level of individual need for protection, cash can be a suitable means of payment despite the factors mentioned, so that a transaction cannot be directly attributed to a specific person without major expenses. Payments by credit card and PayPal are popular and widespread, but usually anything but data protection friendly. We rate credit card and PayPal as rather unsuitable when people want to protect their data. The companies that offer payments with these payment options collect varying amounts of data, aggregate it and pass it on to third parties. Additional privacy options are unfortunately still often opt-out instead of opt-in. The payment data is in turn used, for example, for the optimization and evaluation of advertising. Google, for example, has purchased massive amounts of credit card transaction data from MasterCard precisely for this purpose. But these payment service providers not only collect information, they also limit the possibilities of transactions to certain persons or prohibit the purchase of certain products and product categories altogether. So despite compliance with all legal requirements from customer and seller, 
a payment service provider may be responsible for a transaction not being completed or a merchant get its account with the credit balance closed. We have made requests under the Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, and will process the information contained therein and create a graphic showing who processes and can view which data when using the respective payment methods. Unfortunately, these requests can be somewhat time-consuming and we have not managed to complete them before the completion of this presentation, we apologize. Within Europe, most bank transfers are processed using single euro payments area, SEPA. Depending on the banking institution, it is sometimes not even possible for payment recipients to see the IBAN, account number, of the payment sender. We will also publish which information is processed and stored during bank transfers upon receipt. An employee of our bank told us on the phone that this transaction data is stored for 10 years. International transactions are often made via SWIFT and recently it was confirmed what some have already thought, Europol and CIA are data mining the SWIFT system. Currently only a few stores accept Monero and Bitcoin directly as payment methods. While Monero provides a very good level of anonymity by default, this is more difficult or even impossible to achieve with Bitcoin. This is one of the reasons why Monero is currently the best payment method for, anonymous, online payments in our opinion. The acceptance of Monero and cash for online and offline. Purchases should continue to be expanded. Cash has the great advantage that it is very widely used, even though there is an increase in cashless payments. Now what we have bought still needs to get to its destination place. For this there are basically two possibilities, pickup or delivery. Most online stores do not offer the option of pickup and the few that do are usually equipped with surveillance cameras, as are almost all stores now. The majority of goods ordered online are delivered by logistics companies. To do this, the company must be given an address as a destination, which also got the dealer, the logistics company and sometimes subcontractors working on behalf of the primary logistics company. In the worst case, therefore, at least three entities receive the associated information, who shipped what to whom and when. Where was the shipment posted and where was it picked up or delivered? How heavy is the shipment? This can sometimes allow conclusions to be drawn about the contents of the shipment. An order to the correct address, with a different name can lead to problems if the delivery is not directly successful. Packing station and packing shops are a good way to hide your address, but not all stores deliver orders there and the name must also be given in these cases. Furthermore, for convenience, such delivery points are usually chosen in the vicinity of one's own address, work, or between these points. In addition, there are two other factors that are problematic. A parcel deliverer can, due to the sender's address or the packaging, draw conclusions about the contents and use this knowledge to the disadvantage of the persons concerned, e.g. through burglaries, as he also notices when someone is absent. Postal and parcel controls by the police and secret service. In 2017, it became known that 1,494 employees from Deutsche Post and DHL alone in Germany are involved in these measures. However, these are not there for the actual controls, but only to hand over shipments to the police or secret service. But what else happens behind the scenes of an online purchase? As mentioned at the beginning, most retailers automatically generate invoices, which usually state who bought what, when and how they paid. In Germany, these invoices must be stored for 10 years and issued, for example, in the event of an audit by the tax office. For accounting purposes, some companies hire tax consultants, who also receive all invoices with all the information on them. What is readily apparent with mail providers also applies to payment service providers and platforms. If there are official inquiries, then there are integer enterprises as for example mailbox.org or tutnota.de these inquiries examine let and these only answer, if these inquiries are correctly placed. While others do not make this effort and simply always give out all existing data. The general data protection regulation is basically a good idea, but this can also be detrimental. For example, some companies request additional data for legit imation, sometimes a copy of an ID card, and attackers can make requests on behalf of third parties and, in the worst case, obtain information that should not be accessible to them. Digital self-protection is often classified as suspicious and possibly fraudulent. VPN and Tor are blocked and payments are prevented or blocked. We consider this data storage as a problem. We simply don't know what will happen to this collected data, when or if it will really be deleted, 
Usually companies don't delete this valuable data automatically and then it happens sometime, oops. Outdated software in use, a faulty configuration, careless handling, or some other cause, and your data is suddenly accessible to people for whom it was not intended. Depending on their intention and the data involved, different actions to your detriment can follow. Use of data for commercial purposes such as theft, spam, and phishing or extortion and reputational damage. Use of data for political purposes and espionage, stalking and doxing, or just for fun and curiosity at this point. We will take an example that probably some know, the ledger leak. What happened? On June 25, 2020, someone was able to obtain more than 1,075,000 email addresses and other customer data of more than 272,000 individuals, including, in addition to the email address, the first and last name, an address, street, house number, zip code, city, and country, and a phone number. The affected company, Ledger, is selling hardware wallets with purpose to secure cryptocurrency wallets. Since then, there has been a wide range of actions to the detriment of those affected. Such databases are often redistributed and used by various players. Ledger's customer data has been used for numerous phishing campaigns in multiple languages and through various communication channels, email, SMS. According to company information, 527 phishing websites have been taken offline in this context since October 22, 2020. Because the data set also contained phone numbers, players were able to use SIM swapping to take over the phone numbers often used for two-factor authentication, and gain further access, example, on accounts at cryptocurrency exchanges. An increased amount of phishing and spam emails is quite normal after such an incident. What stands out in this case is that Ledger customers are threatened with break-ins, kidnapping, and death in order to extort money. In most cases, it will have been just a scam to generate revenue from people's fear. However, there have already been several physical attacks, including torture, to obtain digital assets. Such events should not be regarded separately, but in the context of other leaks and public information from the Internet. According to Have I Been Pwned, 69% of the email addresses were already included in previous known leaks. Data protection is prevention. Our current actions can minimize or even prevent the consequences in the future. This has a positive effect not only on oneself, but also on one's environment, such as family, friends, business partners, job, because it not only minimizes one's own direct damage and its effects, but at the same time offers less surface for attacks. Even today, we cannot estimate which of our data may be negatively evaluated in the future. Oh, your insurance shows an increase in the purchase of sugary drinks and you have not renewed your gym membership. The insurance company may suspect that your health is declining and increase your premium. Even if there are other reasons for this, these analyses are carried out automatically. If we want to order something anonymously and confidentially online, it can sometimes be difficult or almost impossible in this existing system with all its players. Procedures such as those mentioned in the recommended book Extreme Privacy by Michael Basil, using Amazon as an example, take time and involve the risk of forfeited funds. Since there are many reasons not to make all data and information accessible to third parties at any time and just hope that nothing will go wrong, we have come up with a method which we have called Proxy Store. This acts as a proxy between the world of the data-hungry companies and the world whose data protection is important. Because the more data we have in circulation, the higher the chance that it will be used against our wishes. Therefore, in our opinion, it is important and should be practice, not to use trackers and analytic tools. Clean tracking URLs, using Tor or VPN is nothing suspicious. Feel free to use our hidden service. Thanks to all who don't run malicious Tor nodes. Only collect what is relevant in maximum as long as it is necessary. Communication should be encrypted and anonymous. Anonymous payment options should be available. Just like anonymous collection options should exist. Without cameras or additional interpersonal interaction. That's why we offer lockers in our store. Are you still worried about being seen? We don't mind if you come by with a balaclava or otherwise make yourself unrecognizable. Are you worried that the delivery address we have on file will show up somewhere? Then send us a paid and labeled parcel stamp. We will stamp the shipment with it and not store anything. Manipulation or insight on the shipping route is not new. 
We have come up with a procedure which we have called random mosaic. This is to detect unauthorized physical access faster and better. We will soon offer this option as well as delayed orders and deliveries. We issue invoices only when requested. Or necessary and not always. If we receive any requests from authorities, we haven't received any yet, our lawyer will check them first. But you don't have to trust us either. A very elegant method of an order process is to follow, online purchase with the proxy store and a redirection to a project like Sub Rosa from Vienna, which allow an anonymous package reception. This way no entity has a full overview and the customer has a good level of protection. This is a short version of what we offer. We want to enable people to make privacy-friendly purchases in a privacy-hostile environment. However, even we can make mistakes and data can be accessed by third parties, this risk is unfortunately close to everywhere. Therefore, we hold it as written by Corey Doctorow in Data, the new oil. Or potential for a toxic oil spill, data minimization isn't just good practice, it's good business. Collect as little data as you can, and keep it as briefly as you can. If your privacy policy fits on the back of a napkin, because you're collecting almost nothing and processing it only for specific purposes, and then deleting it forever, you're on the right track. Unfortunately, we also have limitations, for example, based on the rights we have in place, we must also comply with regulations when purchasing some items. This may require proof of age or, in the context of the Money Laundering Act, may require additional information for some items and reaching the thresholds defined therein. A proxy store is primarily useful locally and from our point of view it means maximum for the European market. This is due to legal and logistic conditions. That is why you also can create one, two, many proxy stores. Unfortunately, due to legal regulations, it is not possible to do it the way we originally thought. Therefore, our proxy store is somewhat limited right now. We want to apply for a Buffin license in the coming weeks, so that we can carry out this procedure, which is declared as a financial transfer business, as originally intended. Unfortunately, this also entails increased financial requirements and bureaucracy. The application alone will cost at least almost 5,000 euro and will cause annual costs of more than 1,000 euro. However, we will probably be able to offer additional services. We thank you for listening and wish you all the best. 